Let's take a look at the proximal end of the tibia. This is the medial condyle. This is the lateral condyle. On top of the two condyles are two quite separate articular surfaces. They're much flatter than those on the femur. The rugged expanse between the articular surfaces is the interarticular area. This prominent lump on the front, the tibial tubercle, is the final insertion of the quadriceps tendon. The small facet under here is for the fibula, which we'll add. This is the head of the fibula. This is the neck. The head of the fibula is the point of attachment of a major ligament of the knee joint, as we'll see. The space on each side of the knee between the femoral condyle and the tibial condyle is occupied by a crescent-shaped piece of cartilage, a meniscus, which we'll see shortly. The space in the middle, the intercondylar notch, is occupied by the two cruciate ligaments. The intercondylar notch and its contents divide the knee joint into two almost separate halves. The tibia is much the larger of the two bones. The shafts of the two bones are covered by muscles, except for the anterior medial aspect of the tibia, which lies directly beneath the skin, all the way from the knee to the ankle. The proximal end of the fibula doesn't form part of the knee joint, but its distal end forms an important part of the ankle joint, as we'll see. The tibia and fibula are held together throughout their length by the strong interosseous membrane. Above and below, they're attached at the two tibiofibular joints. The proximal tibiofibular joint is a synovial joint. The distal one is a fibrous joint. There's very little movement at either of these joints. Distally, the two bones are strongly held together by the anterior tibiofibular ligament and the posterior tibiofibular ligament. The projecting ends of the tibia and fibula, which stick out on either side of the ankle, are called the medial malleolus and the lateral malleolus. The articular surface for the ankle joint is a broad notch formed by the curved under surface of the tibia and the inner surfaces of the medial malleolus and the lateral malleolus.